Hi, this is conservative filmmaker John Ziegler with another video commentary on what's been going on in the world of politics and media. And once again, the subject is Herman Cain. The big news over the weekend is that apparently Herman Cain had two sexual harassment claims against him by two different women back in the 1990s when he was head of the National Restaurant Association. And that apparently that there were cash settlements made by that association to those two women. And of course, the conventional wisdom now is, well, Herman Cain is toast. I mean, look, he has no experience. He's been making all these gaffes, saying these inexplicable things and changing his policy positions. And now we have this scandal. Uh, he's going to end up becoming just like Michelle Bachman, just like Rick Perry or even Donald Trump before him. And the search for the not Romney candidate is going to continue that Herman Cain is toast. Well, I can tell you, as someone who likes Herman Cain personally, but thinks he would be a horrible candidate against Barack Obama in the general election, that the conventional wisdom is dead wrong. In fact, I actually think this scandal, scandal if that's what you want to call it, is going to help Herman Cain, at least in the short run, when it comes to staying in and potentially winning the Republican nomination. Let me explain why. Now, first of all, as background, I want to allude to a video that I put out a couple of weeks ago, which you can find at my website, johnzickler.com, where I make the case that the conservative media is going to help Herman Cain because they have a financial incentive to do so. In short, here was the argument of that video. Herman Cain is great in the short run because he spices up the Republican nominating process. They don't want Romney versus Perry for five months. That's ratings death. Uh, Cain is interesting, and he's black, a great narrative, he's good for ratings, and, by the way, should he win the nomination, an Obama-Cain matchup would be far, far better for ratings, not just for conservative media outlets, but for all media outlets, than would be Romney-Obama, which would be rather boring. So here we have a situation where the conservative media can rally around Herman Cain, stand up for the true conservative, show they're not racist, uh, spice up the Republican nominating process at best, or actually that's at worst, and then at best, maybe even help him win the nomination because that would provide them a much more lucrative general election campaign. And, not to get conspiratorial because it's not a conspiracy, it's simply cynical people acting in their own perceived self-interest, Kane winning the nomination would also ensure... Obama winning re-election, which would be good, good for conservative media outlets, which consider themselves far more, far more to be a business and not a cause. That's the number one thing I wish conservatives understood about conservative media. When I say that, I'm talking about Fox News, Matt Trudge, The Drudge Report, and talk radio. It is a business. It is not a cause. And it would be much better for those businesses, for Barack Obama to be re-elected and thus give them a big juicy target for the next four years than to have, say, Mitt Romney be uh, elected and uh, have no one to go after and no one really even to support because Romney is obviously not loved and he's not all that interesting and he's certainly no Herman Cain when it comes to entertainment value. So we have this huge incentive by the conservative media to help Herman Cain at least come close to being the Republican nominee, if not actually winning the nomination. Not all conservative outlets and media types will act on that incentive, but there's no doubt many will, and all, virtually all, will in fact have that motivation. And we've seen it already with the initial reaction to this sexual harassment scandal. Kane did an absolute softball interview with Fox News Channel. Absolutely a joke interview. Uh, that he never would have gotten on any other television outlet. And he said something absolutely astonishing in that interview. He actually said, Kane did, that he did not know that this association that he was the CEO of had paid cash settlements to settle not one but two sexual harassment claims against him in the 1990s. Now, I'm not sure which is a bigger deal or a bigger problem. The fact that he is lying when he says as CEO of that organization that he didn't know this or that he's telling the truth and as CEO of this organization, he didn't know this. 
because he's either lying, obviously, or telling the truth. And if he's telling the truth, folks, guess what that means? It means that Herman Cain is a fraud, and he's not actually somebody who led any of these businesses or organizations on which his business resume and reputation is built. If this was really the case, that they settled these two cases without him even knowing about it, it means he was nothing but a figurehead, somebody who had been hired simply as a spokesperson, simply as an entertaining, charismatic black guy who would be a good face to put on an organization or a business. And if that's the case, I can guarantee you that in a general election, that's going to become a major issue because liberals would like nothing more than to try to claim that Herman Cain was nothing but a superficial product of affirmative action. And if they can do that, and believe me, the news media would love to make that argument, then he is beyond toast because the only thing he's got going for him is his business record. And that would be destroyed, as would be his candidacy in a general election. But right now, nobody has an incentive to knock him out. And the only people controlling the narrative that matters for Republican voters is the conservative media. And these are people who look at what they do as a business, not a cause. And so they're rallying around Herman Cain as we speak. Specifically, Matt Drudge, who I can prove was totally in the tank for Barack Obama in 2008 and has probably made more money than any individual in the country off of the election of Barack Obama. Well, he's at it again. He's already rallying to Kane's side. First things he put up on the Drudge Report, which dictates an enormous amount of coverage on Fox News and on talk radio, were statements by two other very commercially driven conservatives, Ann Coulter and Rush Limbaugh, both of whom were claiming that this is simply a racist, politically motivated liberal media charge, all because liberals are afraid of a strong conservative black man. Well, there's no question that liberals are, in fact, afraid of a strong conservative black man. Uh, but the reality is there's nothing racist in these allegations, assuming that the story is true and we have no reason to believe that it's not true. It's also a very serious story for the reasons that I've already mentioned. But the narrative here is going to be one that I think will help Cain, at least in the short run. And clearly having the conservative media rally around him, I think, makes his candidacy even more formidable. It makes it more credible. It shows what a big deal he is. It educates people that he's actually leading in the polls and will probably help his momentum. That's the bizarre situation we've got here now, where an inherently flawed candidate who cannot win the general election is being propped up by a conservative media that's claiming to be helping conservatism when, in fact, it's destroying any chance that conservatives have of retaking the White House and maintaining the House of Representatives or taking also the U.S. Senate. It is mind-blowing what's happening, and nobody has the platform and the incentive to reveal this. That's what I'm trying to do with this little web video here, but I fully realize no one's going to pay attention to me either. I'm just telling you the truth. The reality is this is a very bad situation for Republicans, especially with Rick Perry, pissed off as all hell, but with $15 million in the bank, ready to, sh to destroy in the primary season the only guy who actually has a chance of beating Barack Obama, who is Mitt Romney. And the vast majority, or at least a majority, it seems, of Republican voters, especially caucus-going Republican voters in Iowa, seem to be totally convinced that they do not want to bring Mitt Romney home to meet their mother, or whatever other romantic analogy you might want to use. The reality is they realize it's getting late in the game. It's 1 a.m. at the local pickup bar. They're latching on to Herman Cain. They realize he's the best option they've got. No one else is likely to walk through the door at this late hour. They've already gone through Michelle Bachman and Rick Perry. They're not going to do that again. Newt Gingrich seems interesting, but let's face it, he's too old to spur much of a surge of anything other than complete and total desperation. Rick Santorum just doesn't pass the smell test. He just doesn't have it. Ron Paul is too liberal on foreign policy issues to even be considered an option. So they're going to stick with Herman Cain because they really, really don't want to go home with Mitt Romney. Who, by the way, once again, just a reminder, the only one who can actually beat Barack Obama. But as soon as Cain gets that nomination, everything is going to flip, folks. 
The media is going to go after him like you've never seen before. They're going to make what happened to Sarah Palin look like a friendly family picnic. They're going to take those very same knives that they used to carve up her candidacy. They're going to resharpen them, and they're going to come after him with even more vengeance because, after all, he'll be at the top of the ticket, not the vice presidential spot, and he's a black man, not just a woman. So he's far more threatening to both Obama and uh, to the entire narrative of the liberal media when it comes to Republicans. And he's already, Kane has, given them an incredible amount of ammunition to use to destroy him, having nothing even to do with these sexual harassment claims or the problems that they create that I've already chronicled. This is a very bad situation. So unfortunately, we have a deal here where Herman Cain is not only not dead, I think he's got a hell of a chance to win the nomination, which would again ensure Obama's re-election. Just as a matter of fact, today, I placed a bet at the in-trade market on Herman Cain to win the Republican nomination. The odds are only 5% at this time, which is a joke. It's way higher than that, I believe, based upon the circumstances I've already told you about. And um, I also bet, put a bet on Barack Obama to win re-election, because the two are going to go currently very much hand in hand. Perhaps you should consider doing the same yourself if you want to make a buck, uh, and it, because there's not much else good that's going to happen if Barack Obama is reelected. If you like this video, agree or disagree, make sure to uh, pass it on to a friend, and you can check out all my commentaries at johnzigler.com. Thanks for watching.